I'm Andrew Joseph Keith, and in this video, I'm going to show you my process for turning $50 worth of materials into a $1,000 sculpture commission. This video is sponsored. It's sponsored by my online sculpting courses. There's a figure sculpting course as well as a portrait sculpting course. So if you're interested in taking your sculptures to the next level, I hope you'll check those out. You can find links for both of those down in the description below. So the client wanted a unique Christmas gift to give her father, and they had a favorite photo of him as he's walking out with the chickens. The first thing I did was some design sketches to get the basic layout of the project and the scale. With these types of commissions, once we've decided on a design, I ask for 20% up front so that I can purchase materials and get started on the sculpting. Next, I grabbed an aluminum wire armature that was made out of soft 14 gauge aluminum wire. What I like about having pre-made armatures is that all of the proportions of the body that can be really tricky are already in place right from the start. If you'd like to see my method, my favorite method for building wire armatures, there's a link in the description below where you can sign up for my email list and I'll send you a link to my favorite method for building wire armatures, and that's free. Once I've captured the pose with the armature, I start to add aluminum foil to build out the mass of the chest and legs and head so I don't have to use as much clay on the inside of the sculpture. Now I can cover the armature with a thin layer of polymer clay. For this sculpture, I used granite original Sculpey clay that I got from Hobby Lobby. This clay is usually around $10 a pound. In total, I used about two pounds for the project, as well as a section of black polymer clay that I used to change the color of this gray granite clay into a darker gray. One of the nice things about using polymer clay is that you can bake it in a regular oven and get it to harden into a plastic-like material. I'm using the granite gray right from the packaging and just adding enough clay so that the armature is covered in a thin layer. The client wanted the gray to be a little bit darker and I agreed that it looked better darker. So I mix a black brick of polymer clay in with the granite gray to get this deeper gray color. Then I repeated the process for the first layer of clay and covered the sculpture completely with the darker clay. To steady the sculpture, I used a floor sample piece that I got from Home Depot and then I added a small amount of polymer clay around the base and feet. Then I took a heat gun that I got from Harbor Freight and warmed up the clay around the base enough to where it hardened in place. I left the rest of the sculpture soft though so I could still make changes if I needed. Now that the sculpture was relatively sturdy, I started to develop the forms focusing primarily on the back angle which is the only angle that I had as a reference for this pose. Because of this, I wanted to make extra sure that I was capturing the pose and likeness from this angle. Now might be a good time to like the video. Helps me out a lot and I really appreciate it. And if you're interested in this type of content, I hope you'll subscribe to the channel. As soon as I had this back angle a little bit more developed, I took reference video and photos of myself in a similar pose with similar clothes on so that I had additional references from the front and side views. I believe you can never have too many good references when you're figure sculpting. The figure is really complicated, so the more visual information you have, the less visual information you have to make up from your head. With more references, I could continue to work on developing the pose and the folds of the drapery in the clothing. For some areas, it was easier to use a tool to add clay to the surface of the sculpture, and for other areas, I just used my hands and fingers to develop the sculpture. The client and I had talked about using a rough texture, similar to this texture that I used on this other polymer clay sculpture that I'd done a couple months before. This means that even in areas where I use the tools to shape the clay, I came back afterwards and used my fingers to add that roughed out texture. With additive sculpture, you usually want to start thin and then slowly build out the forms by adding pieces of clay to the surface. I found that it's much harder to get a natural looking surface by carving away clay. So as much as I can, I'm trying to sculpt thin and build the sculpture by adding clay. There's no getting around this part of the sculpture that just takes a lot of time to slowly develop the forms. There was a point where I wasn't liking what was happening with the arms. 
and I didn't want the lighter clay underneath to show when I needed to carve away areas. So I removed the clay from the arms and then started over with the darker clay. There was also an issue with the aluminum foil and armature around the area of the shoulders. So I had to remove some clay and then I used a tool to press the armature deeper into the sculpture. Once I became comfortable with how the sculpture was developing, I took the heat gun again and heated up the clay to allow it to harden along the body of the figure. I didn't use the heat gun to cure the head though because I wasn't sure how much work it would still need. Then I took a break from the farmer to work a little bit on the chickens. Having never sculpted chickens before, I grabbed some references online and started to build out the chickens with sections of aluminum foil. Once I had little worm-like rough gesture chickens of aluminum foil, I then added a thin layer of clay and used the heat gun to harden that first layer. Next, I came back to the farmer and started to develop the head, adding on the baseball cap and starting to work on the ears, the collar, and roughing out the facial features. I also gave a slight indication for the glasses to see if I liked how that looked, and I did like it, so I decided to keep them. The head was a bit large compared to the figure, so I used a butter knife to cut away some of the clay from the back of the head. Sometimes when you're sculpting, it's good to know when to move on and not overwork an area, and when doing something in a roughed out style, that can be especially true, so I moved on from the head and started to touch up the rest of the figure and make sure that everything was working. Once the farmer was getting closer to being finished, I moved back to the chickens and added another layer of fresh clay onto the hardened polymer clay. Then I made little chicken legs and feet out of thin aluminum wire that I bent into a stand that I could then use to pose the chickens. I was then able to hold this part of the sculpture while I was working on the details for the chickens. It's good to focus on the primary forms. In this case, that kind of worm shape of the chickens and capture the gesture with that first. And then you move on to the secondary forms like the mounds and fluff for the wings, the feathers and other forms. As soon as these forms were roughed out and in place, I used the heat gun again to solidify the progress that I'd made on the chickens. Once the chickens and farmer were done, I put them on the stained plywood board and placed fresh clay around the base of the farmer and the chickens so that I had an idea of the size and thickness that the clay ground should be. When I was happy with the placement of the farmer and chickens, I put them in the oven and baked them according to the instructions on the package. Once that was hardened, I used some two-part epoxy to glue the sculpture onto the stained plywood base. Some pieces of stone that I had lying around from other projects helped to add some weight to the sculpture to make sure that there was a good attachment while the epoxy was curing. And there we have it, a farmer and some chickens. The total cost of materials was around $50. The total time that it took to sculpt this sculpture was about 13 hours. And so that means that I made about $73 an hour if you just calculate the labor cost of course, if you're an artist, you know that the person that's hiring you isn't hiring you just for your time. They're hiring you for all the time you've spent to build up your skills over the years and the thousands of hours that you've spent developing that ability. If you too would like to learn how to sculpt clay so that you can take regular materials and then transform them into a finished sculpture that somebody will pay you money for, then be sure to check out the Proco Figure Sculpting Fundamentals course. In that course, I go over everything that I wish I was taught when I first began sculpting the figure. Thank you for watching. Stay creative, stay productive. I'll see you in the next video.